uh, just repeat again, uh, when a topic is first discussed, it's like we will ask questions and discuss the topic before opening it to the public. Once we open the meeting, you kind of raise your hand and wait to be recognized. If you're in a room, you will need to go to the podium to speak so that people on Zoom can hear you. If you're on Zoom, raise your electronic hand and wait to be called upon. Please state your name before you speak. Even if everyone knows who you are, this just makes it easier to transcribe the minutes. Depending on the amount of participation, we may limit the comments and questions to two minutes. Thank you. Okay, first thing, additions and deletions to the agenda. Um, I don't have anything. I guess, do we need an executive session? I don't have anything for executive session tonight, so the board does not. I don't think so. Okay, so we need that. Citizens' comments? You're up. We want to maybe do one of the lights down so you can see a little better. That helps? Yep. Yeah. Okay. One more thing. Everyone signed in. If you haven't signed in, please sign in. There's a clipboard going around someplace. Thank you. Okay. Um, so thank you for everyone for coming uh, today. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, the more people we have in these meetings, the better the meetings are, uh, the more input we get from the community. And so we'd like to see this room as full as possible. But, so thank you everyone who came out, especially on short notice. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, before we hop into kind of the presentation we worked on to put together for everyone tonight, I wanna pause and um, just thank a few people. Uh, this is the furthest the town has ever come to potentially acquiring its own water system. Uh, that is due to the work of a lot of hard people. The work of a <laughs> back up. Um, the hard work of a lot of people. Um, I can't uh, spend all night uh, thanking everyone because I'm hoping to be out here in 20 minutes. Um, so I'd rather use that time more efficiently. Um, but a few people I want to um, call out is um, Charlie Kimball uh, is in the audience. Um, immediately after the flood, uh, after asking what he could do for us, um, he put together a public forum with the aqueduct uh, we had back in August. Uh, he then asked to form a water working group. Um, so himself and a bunch of people on that committee, uh, they did a lot of work um, throughout the fall and the winter uh, to get us to where we are right now. So I want to thank Charlie and the whole working group. Um, their names are on the websites, so if you want to go see who they were. Um, they're up there as well. Um, I want to thank John Spector. Uh, John Spector used his vast network um, to hook us up with the Harvard Business School. Uh, we got uh, students to come up to Woodstock. They worked on this question for the whole semester. Um, they presented to the public uh, in November their findings. Um, they were extremely helpful to have four people who would definitely be running the world in a few years help us out. Um, was very helpful, so I want to thank John as well. Um, I also want to thank the select board. Um, the town is as far as they've ever been in this process, and that's due to the five of you and your work, uh, motivation, dedication to get to this point. Um, so I want to thank you for all you've done and apologize for the next few months, uh, but we're going to get through it together because uh, we're doing the right thing. We're doing the things that need to happen. Um, I also want to thank my wife, Tina, who knows way too much about Woodstock water system than she ever thought she would when we moved here. Uh, she's hopefully not watching and just having a peaceful night, but I want to thank her um, as well. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, I think the first question is, why are we here? Uh, why do we think Woodstock needs to purchase and then control its own water system? Um, the purpose we're going after uh, is to ensure Woodstock has a stable water system, town-wide fire safety, and a secure future. What does that mean? It means we have safe water, not only today, but in the future for our kids, for our businesses, for our tourists to keep Woodstock going and having people want to live here. How about fire safety? We'll talk a lot about this tonight. Currently, our fire hydrants are not up to state specific mandated codes, which puts us at liability for fires. When there is a fire, we have to use a hydrant. It's not as easy to turn it on. We have to monitor the water flow elsewhere. It's a massive hazard. And we, don't, we can't have that for the amount of density we have in the village. 
fact that the village is the economic engine of Woodstock uh, and a secure future. Uh, everyone here has gotten the tax bills um, probably by now. You saw the increase in the tax for this, the education. Uh, we're trying to keep our tax rate low, but we have services we need to provide. We need more money. The only way to really find a way to keep Woodstock successful is to grow the tax base, grow the grand list. We cannot do that if we don't own our water system and plug that into places like an East End um, and then save money by marrying our water and sewer at the same time. Um, so that's kind of the purpose statement we're working off of as we go through this process. Other reasons, it keeps costs low. Everyone who's looked into this uh, question of whether town should acquire the aqueduct or not comes with the, the same response. The cheapest option, oh sorry, the least expensive option for Woodstock taxpayers is for it to be owned by a municipality. If it's owned by the aqueduct, if it's owned by a private equity firm, your costs are going to go up. The town has ability to have low interest rates, to get grant funding through the state and federal government, yeah. and congressional appropriations. That is not open to private companies. So to keep costs low, it's in the best benefit for the town to own the system. Second, uh, it's easy to forget where we were 14 months ago. Um, we have a fellowship from Indonesia who's been here the last week, turning around, giving her the backstory of the flood from last year. I can't remember, I can't believe how far we've come since then, but I don't know how many people actually think back to where we were in July. Uh, 10 days without portable water, that wasn't drinking water for your kids, for the school. Um, businesses shut down, restaurants closed. The Woodstock Resort canceling numerous events, probably costing them millions of dollars, which then costs us money on the 1% book option tax. Um, the Thompson Center, not able to feed and cook their uh, older residents they serve who require those, five, the, those meals five days a week. Um, they had to go to the Woodstock Resort, who had to go to Assassina 6 and open the kitchen just so people in the senior center could eat for those, for those 10 days. That happened here in Woodstock 14 months ago. We want to make sure that does not happen again. By controlling the water system, we have more control of that. If there's another emergency, FEMA funding will be available to us almost immediately, which means we can make the re these repairs and get reimbursed at at least 75, if not to 90% of the total cost. I'm going to hammer this home all night long. Um, fire hydrants are not complacent with state regulations. Uh, I'm going to keep on saying this, but this is a massive issue for us. And so we need to solve yesterday, not, not tomorrow. Finally, um, current projects in Woodstock cannot get a new water connection. Uh, Mellish Wood, Stafford Commons, um, Farmer in the Bell, who's trying to open up down by East End. They're unable to get a water connection. How are we going to recruit developers into Woodstock if they can't be sure they're going to be able to connect to water when they get here or be forced to uh, build a well? Uh, a much higher cost on that end. So again, these are things that by ownership of the town, we can immediately put things in place to solve these issues. So I wanna take a step back and talk about what is the value of the Woodstock Aqueduct Company currently? We're talking a lot today about controlling the water system and why that's good, uh, but we're talking about an acquisition. It's not just having the water system, it's what they bring with them. Their current property, uh, we have assessed um, at about $1.9 million. Uh, if you uh, adjust that to the current CLA, uh, that value goes up to about $3 million. Uh, Non-property assets. So these are things like machines, piping, tools. Uh, estimated value about $1.4 million. That puts the value of the Woodstock Aqueduct's assets somewhere between $3.2 to $4.1 million. When we talk about funding for the acquisition, what money do we have currently right now? The town has received $288,000 of reimbursable state grants, specifically dedicated to the acquisition of the Woodstock Aqueduct and the improvements it needs uh, to run efficiently. In negotiations with the Aqueduct, they have agreed to transfer $175,000 they have as a state grant that they got to fix Elm Street to the town to help in this acquisition. That's a total of $463,000 we have as a town that could go towards this acquisition of money that's not coming out of taxpayers' wallets. 
So why is everyone here today? You want to know what we're talking about? Um, so with that in mind, um, we're happy to announce that the select board and the aqueduct have come to terms um, for an acquisition. Um, the first term we agreed to, uh, the town will acquire uh, the Woodside Aqueduct and all its assets outside of the Vondell Reservoir for $920,000. What that does is we wipe off their debts. They get no money from us on that end. The company will dissolve and the town of Woodstock will take over the system of uh, the water system in Woodstock. Just so everyone knows, that debt, the 920, is currently paid by everyone in this room who's a taxpayer. Anyone home that's a taxpayer. If you are on water, your water rates include a percentage to pay off the debt. If you are in the town, the hydrant fees that you pay, part of that hydrant fee is going towards the debt. So we're paying that debt right now. This acquisition will help wipe that debt off immediately. The previous slide, we have access to almost 50% of the total acquisition cost from the state, which means we're half that cost is already covered by non-residents already. The state's given us money to help go towards that, that acquisition. The second term um, is the Aqueduct has agreed to sell their Vondell Reservoir, which is about 352 acres in West Woodstock, um, to the town of Woodstock. Um, when you take the Vondell Reservoir, take it out of land use, and um, add in the CLA, um, the value of that is somewhere between $0.7 million. Um, so we're getting it for 1.6. The value could be up to 1.75, just based on the CLA. So with that said, um, we've been working on that now for a while. Um, for about over a year now, the select board has been in negotiations with the aqueduct. Uh, we had a water working group. We had the Harvard Business School. Um, we had negotiations. We had conversations about how to roll this out. We're very excited about a plan. Um, the goal was to hold, and I use the past tense, was to hold a vote in November uh, for the $920,000 to uh, wipe off the debt and take control of the aqueduct, um, 1.6 million to own the Vonda Reservoir, um, and then to go out to bond for necessary capital improvements that we know we have to do. So that was the goal we had. We had a communication plan. We we're all very excited about it. Um, we thought this was a great way to give the community plenty of time to get their input. What capital projects do you want? What's the future you want for Vondell? Um, what do you want to see when we own the, own the water company? Uh, we really want to give the community time to have your input because we value your input. As I said earlier, the more we hear from the community, the better we can make decisions as, as a board. However, um, the best laid plans often go awry. Um, so we had all this plan, all these things. We're very excited for it. And something happened. Um, we were ready to announce this plan in early September. Uh, we had everything kind of gearing up. Um, and then I got a phone call from the states. Um, and they want to know the progress we're making towards acquisition. I kind of told them, yeah, we're excited. We're thinking about a vote in November. You know, we're, we're positive about a positive result. And they said, oh, yeah, uh, we got what word that we want all the funds to be guaranteed by September 30th. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, we want you to have a contract by September 30th saying you're going to spend the money. If not, we're taking the money back and going to reallocate it to make sure someone else uses it. Needless to say, that conversation kind of did not go the way I wanted to, and there may have been a little, a little yelling. Um, after some more conversations, some help from um, people we know in the States, um, they agreed to move that deadline to October 31st given us an extra month to have that grant available uh, to go towards this acquisition. And as one of my favorite characters says, if you don't do it twice, it's not real government work. So the spec board went back and we came up with another plan. And going through this plan, we looked at three different options. Option one was say, okay, let's stick with the plan. Let's go to, go to vote in November and we'll forfeit uh, $280,000, potentially $463,000, and just, you know, swallow it and move on. Uh, the board thought that that was financially irresponsible of them, and so that option was not something we chose. Option two was to rush the vote and say, okay, we have an October deadline. Let's just push the November vote into October and do the same thing and hope for the best. Um, because the way the state statute is written, 
we have to warn a meeting for 30 days, which means to have a meeting held by October 31st, we have to warn the meeting by September 30th, uh, which gives us roughly eight days to talk to you and figure out what you want to do for capital projects, how you want to handle the Vondel, um, and what you want to see for the future of Woodstock. Again, we thought that was not what we want to do. We want to get input from you. We want you to be involved in this process. We want you to feel that the decision the select board makes is the decision that the community wants. So we thought that was not a great option. So then we had to think creative. Uh, what's a different way we could do this deal? Uh, so we took some time, we have some meetings, um, and we came up with what we thought is a very good solution. So the select board is planning on holding a special town meeting uh, October 29th, it's a Tuesday at 6 p.m. In that meeting, the select board is going to ask the residents uh, for approval to use $457,000 from the town's undesignated fund balance to purchase the aqueduct and all its assets outside of the Vondel Reservoir. We'll get into more details in a second about the undesignated fund balance is, um, but I'll get it in a second. Um, sorry. So with those two funds, that is the total we need to wipe the debt off the aqueduct. And we're doing this by not incurring any extra cost to any person in Woodstock. The decision we made was this is a necessity. The select board feels we need to own the water company for the future of Woodstock. At the same time, we did not want to lose the grant money. We also did not want to um, not talk to the community about this whole project as a whole. So there's this vote that we're asking the citizens to basically vote yes for the acquisition. No one thought can cost you a single cent right now. But we want to be very, very clear. Acquiring the aqueduct on October 29th is step one. Step two is there are capital projects that have to happen. The state is mandating them. We, so we cannot buy the aqueduct and then not do anything. So we're going to hold a second vote. Um, in December. So these capital projects uh, are to ensure that water flows significantly through our pipes to make sure our hydrants are at the state mandated level um, and also to hopefully gain more flow throughout uh, the village and town. And these projects are going to get done whether we own the company or we own the water system or the aqueduct does. The difference will be how much it costs. We are able to get low interest loans, we're able to get grants, congressional uh, appropriations, the aqueduct will not. They'll get a loan from the bank and that'll be the total, that's what we'll be paying. So again, we'll be able to find ways to make it cheaper for everyone. Other capital projects will be required if we want to increase water flow even more. So if we're looking at development in East End, if we're looking at um, increased water flow to do more in the village, there will be other capital projects that need to happen to ensure that can happen. So we're talking about increasing the grand list. Um, we're gonna need to make sure we have the ability to have more water connections. That means more water flow. What we've been told by our, the engineer is the step one will get, should get us over the state mandated level, close to it. It could also potential, potentially increase water to have new water connections, depending on how successful that project is. So if, the October 29th vote is successful. Uh, the town will then hold another special vote um, in December and ask the residents to approve a bond for their Vondel Reservoir um, and the needed capital improvements. So again, we just wanna be very, very clear that this is a two-step process. Um, so because of that, between now and the first vote and then the second vote, the select board will hold informational meetings like this in this room and downstairs, hopefully, if we get a lot of participants. We're also going to be out in the community, hopefully daily, um, at certain locations to allow the public to come up and talk to us. Vice Chair Susan Ford and I will be at South Woodstock tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Um, I will going to put together a schedule and it's going to be on everywhere so people will know where we're at. So if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you want to talk to us, if you want to help us, and advocate for this and you want to know what how to convince your friends come talk to us 
why are we doing this way? Why are we splitting the two votes? Why are we having a vote a week before the general election? Why are we having a vote right afterwards? Why are we splitting up how we're doing this all? Um, one, we don't lose state grants. We feel it's irresponsible in this time period when we know how much taxes are to leave money on the table. And the select board views owning the water company is vital and necessary to the future of Woodstock. Two, we felt it was inappropriate to ask for support of the Vondell capital projects at the acquisition and given residents up to five days to talk about this and ask them to make a serious vote in 30 days. We believe this approach solves both of those issues. One, we can acquire the aqueduct without causing any money. So if, even though we haven't had a long conversation about it, we're not asking you to front up any money. Second, we now will have two months between now and that second vote, ideally, to talk to you, to be in the community with you, get, get your feedback, talk about what you want for Woodstock, what development do you want, what cattle projects do you want? So that's the approach we're taking. So what's gonna happen next? Uh, Wednesday, the select board is gonna hold another meeting uh, where they're gonna sign the warning uh, for the special town meeting. Uh, again, that meeting will be October 29th at town hall at 6 p.m. And based on current regulations, it will be a floor vote. So it will not be Australian ballots, it'll be a floor vote. So you have to come in person, you're gonna have to sit there and then vote all at once on whether you acquire, uh, whether you approve or disapprove of this acquisition. Um, we will be as communicative as possible. So we're gonna set the schedules, we're gonna blast them out on our website, on the listserv, on my Substack. if you wanna subscribe, it's exciting. Um, <laughs> Any way we can to get together to reach you, we're going to let you know when these meetings are happening, who's going to be there, um, what time, and hopefully you can come out and meet, meet with us and talk about it and get all the information you can as possible. Um, what else do we want you to know? Uh, one, these are the capital projects that the Selectwood has prioritized so far, or at least have talked about them um, publicly uh, last month. One is Elm Street's bridge. I think you're all aware of that pipe it's still on the sidewalk. Um, so we have a quote that's about $700,000 to make that repair and put it underneath the bridge. Um, that is one of our main goals. And while I have a capital audience, I just want to say this a second time out loud. If we had owned the water system July 1st of last year, that pipe would not be there right now. We would have got, we would have been able to repair it within the month we would have been reimbursed by FEMA and the state, and that pipe would have been gone probably by August, September at the latest. All of the FEMA emergencies, disaster funds we've spent have now been reimbursed to us. Uh, we're $8,000 short, and that's because we're waiting for the state to kick in their 11%. Um, so we've gained back all the money we spent in the flood so far. This project would have been one of them. Uh, Second one is there's an engineering report that was done on the Woodstock Aqueduct. It's on our website. We'll give you a link today. Um, I have a copy printed out. It's about 60 pages, so I don't want to make too many copies, but we're happy to make a copy for you. I make a copy for you if you want. And it lists out all suggested capital projects the Woodstock Town should look into. The one we're told is the one that has to happen immediately is what they refer to as option 1B. Last year, it was about $4.3 million. Uh, what that is, is uh, to repair the pipe and fix the pipe coming down Route 4 o'clock district all the way to the bridge by the rec center. Uh, the assumption, the hope, is that will be enough flow to immediately get us up to the uh, fire hydrant level. Um, and then potentially, knock on wood, maybe some extra uh, flow as well. Um, then they also recommend a new water tank somewhere on, on, along Route 12. This is a more in-depth project. So we have to find the land, negotiate for the land, um, but this will create a new tank, which again, will create more water, create more flow. Um, these are all expensive, long-term projects that are gonna take time to go through. And this is why we want to have that split vote. So you have time to ask questions about these, to read the report, ask questions, and then come to meetings and advocate for what you think we should do. Next, we talked about using $457,000 of undesignated fund balance. So what is undesignated fund balance? The simplest way to explain this 
is funds the town have accumulated over the years when revenue has been in excess of what we budgeted for and expenses have been lower than what we bu than we budgeted for. So say for a year, we thought we'd get $1,000 in parking fines and we got $2,000, right? We already raised the taxes for that money, so that $1,000 is excess revenue. It falls into this account. Uh, if we have, um, if we're short staff somewhere and so we don't use all the expenses up in that line for say um, public works. So that maybe $80,000 is extra money that we didn't spend. That falls into this account. As of June 30th, 2023, the town's undesignated funding balance was roughly $1.7 million. By using the $457,000 talked about earlier, that will leave us with over about 1.2 left. Uh, we'll then know more once the audit's completed. That's still about 15% of our, the town's overall budget. 15% is where VLCT, Mount League of Cities and Towns, uh, recommends your undesignated fund balance be. They feel 15% is enough to cover any unforeseen emergencies you know, throughout the year. Uh, for example, we spent about $263,000 on disaster relief after the flood. Um, we were able to cover that because we have an undesignated fund balance until we got reimbursed from um, FEMA. Other towns had to go and get a loan to cover themselves in that short term. Because of this fund, we were not able to. Um, where you can find more information about this. Um, so on our website, um, this is a little bit old, but we have um, go to the about page. Underneath it, we have information um, on the town's acquisition of the water company. On there, you'll see um, the Harvard Business School video, the public forum from August, the design, um, the primary engineering reports. You will see um, some new information we put up there just today. Uh, the video of today will be up there. The PowerPoint will be up there tomorrow morning. Um, and any other information we have between now and the votes will be on this website for you to look at and read and understand and go through. To sum this all up, um, weirdly, I'm reading a book. Um, and this was a quote I read yesterday. Uh, we never know the worth of water until the, until the well is dry. You, know, you never know how worthy something is so you don't have it, right? Um, and if I kind of put a twist on that for Woodstock, um, we never know the worth of owning our own water system until there's a flood, there's no portable water for 10 days, the water pipe is still on the sidewalk 14 months later, and oh yes, there's still not enough water for new water connections, right? So this is what we're talking about, oh, how valuable this is. It's easy to turn on your sink and get water, it's easy to turn on your tub and get water, but think about what happens when you can't. And who do you call? Right? Who here has tried to call the aqueduct and never gotten anyone on the phone? Right? How many people have called me personally and talked to me on the phone? Right? That's a difference. Robert's here. He's gotten a thousand tax bills questions in the last three weeks. Right? He will also get a thousand sewer bills and then hopefully soon a thousand water bill questions. You know where we are. We're here. We can answer the phone. We can talk to you. We can help, help you through your problems. This is Elm Street, in case you need to, uh, a reminder, what it looks like currently. This picture is from last week. So, a lot of times when I talk, unfortunately, a lot of times when we have these big meetings, it's bad news. It's difficult conversations. We feel this is good news. This is exciting. We want to own our water, our water system. We want to have control of what happens in Woodstock when it comes to water. We want secure water for the future. We are excited about this. Um, this is a one big step closer to ensuring our residents, businesses, and schools have access to safe water. Um, we'll have the ability to control our own water and take advantage of other funding sources. They'll lessen the financial burden to the town. Right now, through the help of our en energy coordinator to two rivers, uh, the town's in line for a million dollars of congressional appropriations for the new wastewater plant renovations. We can apply for the same things when we own this water system. Um, those things will be available to us once we have ownership, but not right now. This is the best, greatest, and she's the first step Woodstock can take towards encouraging what we know is a housing development crisis in Woodstock. Until we own the water, until we have control of how much water flows through Woodstock, we're hampered at what we can do when it comes to development and new houses. 
I know everything we said is a lot. We're talking about spending millions of dollars. We're talking about acquiring a new system that I will have to oversee, that Rob will have to oversee, that the select board will have to set water rates for and talk about water abatements. This is a lot of information for everyone in this room and for Woodstock. This is something that Woodstock has not done in a very, very long time. We know that. That's why we want to take you, give you the time to talk about this, not only tonight, tomorrow at the South Woodstock Country Store, and for the next two months. But we also want to be excited about this. We're, we're, we're close to doing this. This has been a private company since 1874, 1886, right? We're within a month of potentially owning this water system for no additional cost to taxpayers. Within, within two months of owning this water company, 352 acres that give us water security for the future and sign capital pro improvements that will secure Woodstock's future. We want to be happy. We are excited about this. Um, we think you should be excited about it. We want you to be excited about it. We don't want this to become a thing where people are yelling at each other on the listserv. We are behind this. We want to do this. If you have a question, if you have a concern, yes, post on listserv if you want, but also call me, email me, pick up the phone, come to my office, find your select board members. Their email is on the website. The phone numbers are everywhere. Everyone knows who they are. They will be places, not only in their home. I'll tell you where they work if you want to. Um, Greg will be hard. Greg moves around a lot, but his name is on the truck, so he should be easy to spot. Never find me. <laughs> Wait for a snowstorm and get in front of someone's driveway, and there they will be. Um, we want you to have all the information. We want you to feel like, excited about this possibility as we are. So please reach out to us, talk to us. If you have concerns, reach out to us. I was just with someone who quoted me a very wrong number about this acquisition, right? And I was there. I was like, oh, no, it's this number, which is great. But what's like has a tendency for people to talk and things spiral? If you have a question and it sounds a little weird, we're here. Reach out to us. Ask us. We'll give you the right information. Right? We want this to happen. We want you to vote for this. But we want you to be informed when you vote for this. We want you to make the right decision because you have all the information and you choose to do what you think is right. Um, it's going to be hard work for all of us. I'm asking the select board to spend time weekly, daily on the community at spots so you have the ability to talk to them. I'm picking up my time to make sure I'm available for everyone. I spent the last weekend with the select board working on this presentation and notes. This is hard work for us, but we want to do it and we want your help in it. We want these conversations. We want them to be insightful, we want them to be fruitful. And we want you at the end of the day on October 29th, and then ideally December 10th, um, to come out and vote for your future. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, and we'll open up to, uh, I don't think the select board has any extra comments, or if not, we can open up to questions from everyone here. Just want to thank Eric for the presentation. And we will open up to questions. Again, if you want a question, please come to the podium or um, raise your hand online. We have a question online. Okay. Jeffrey? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for that excellent presentation, Eric. But my question is, the Vondell Reservoir, is with that acquisition at the price you said be unencumbered or is other monies owed on that? Unencumbered, yeah, it's it's just one point six for the, the total uh, property. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Comments? Yeah, yeah. Come on up. Just state your name, please. Yep. Hi, my name is Steve Fulkerson. Um, my wife Linda and I are are. Um, residents here, uh, we're, we're newbies. Um, I wanna thank the board. I think you guys have done a great job under kind of weird circumstances. I don't know enough probably to say that with confidence, but I trust you and I, and I appreciate the work and, and I appreciate Eric's work in, in trying to bring this all together. Um, a couple questions, and I assume Eric, we would find this on the website. Um, the Vondell Reservoir, I don't know much about that. Yep. 
I know that I assume that is a source of the town's water as well as the wells, um, what, uh, north of town. But I, is, that, is that an essential part of the strategic plan to make sure that Woodstock has sufficient reservoir capacity for growth in the future? Is that what Vondell is needed for? Yeah, so there's two things. One is there are property on there that's owned by the aquifer that they use. So in the original 920 acquisition, we'll, we'll have easements. So we have access to that property to make sure we can get there as well as the reservoir. The point of the reservoir is, A, it's aqueduct property. Um, B, it's 352 acres. It's used as a recreational spot for now for a place like Walmart and everything else. But there is also a reservoir up there that we could use for future use if we needed to for water use. So it, it's not a primary source now? Currently not. Okay, thank you. Good to, good to know and see that kind of sit to the side, uh, not on the, on the strategic path as an essential uh, acquisition. Um, question two, with regard to the engineering study, um, that is all on site and set cover all of the different capital projects that uh, were have been discussed with the select board as far as future um, projects and the needs for those? Yes and no. So this was our engineering report um, that was done for the Woodstock Aquina Company. So there are suggested capital projects. Um, there are some that also aren't included if we want to go long term. So these are things that they feel they had to do sooner rather than later. But as you know, owning any kind of system over the years, it will be for future capital projects that you have to do, um, whether it's five, 10 years from now, but they will be other things we need to do. Uh, one will be kind of changing the pipes, you know, updating the infrastructure, things like that. Yeah, okay. Um, one last question. Um, with regard to um, the idea that the acquisition would allow the town to be able to better control um, I'll say the development of housing here in town. Um, I would hope that when that is looked at, if this passes, and I and I hope that it does, and just tell you now, I, I think you guys have done a great job, and, and I hope that this goes forward. I realize it's tight time uh, constraints and a lot happening all at once, but my sense is 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 sounds like it's a needed thing and and uh, needs to go forward. I would hope that the board select board considers if this went uh, forward that with the idea of further development in the village that some of these costs that would be capital costs for extending mains to perhaps some areas where development would take place that those costs wouldn't just be borne by the taxpayers but that whoever does the development and i realize it could be both the village um, the town, and it could be with contractors, but some of those costs are recuperated through that process for those improvements. So I hope that everybody considers that in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. oh. Two hands again. Thank you for all the work that you've done. And um, Peggy Fraser, Woodstock Village. Um, just thinking about the future of Woodstock, which this is so geared to, and in my opinion, necessary. Just thinking in terms of some of the funding uh, to ask the uh, EDC, the Economic Development Council, to hold back on some of the financing for next year and dedicate those funds because I cannot think of anything more important than the water for the economic development of the future of Woodstock. Thank you. Thank Just you. a thought. Yeah, um, so part of the conversation we're talking about going forward in the next month, two months, is talking about how to fund the, the second part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll have those conversations publicly as well. So I hope that you attend and advocate for what you want. The EDC is having a meeting until October, which has to be on April. Carrie, did you? Harry Bristow, Woodstock Village. Um, 
I applaud you for all the work you've done. I think it's a tough time to be bringing forward capital improvements when we are just being hit with quite a large increase in our taxes. Um, and while I agree that we need to buy the water company, I don't disagree with that. I feel a little bit like we're being held hostage by having to pay for it now and find money that, although you say it doesn't cost us anything, probably us tax have paid into that fund, as well as the, uh, as much as $10 million of improvements that we will certainly be paying for, hopefully with some state grants. I'm well aware of the deficiencies in the water system. I live up above the two brand new projects that had to dig wells. I've enjoyed the pleasure of um, rock, rock, um, what do you, or whatever you call that when they try to drill into hard rock and the watch the wells go in. I don't have very good water pressure myself due to breaks that happened that couldn't get fixed for some unknown reason. Um, I've experienced calling and not getting an answer for days, um, but I do feel as though that it seems wrong to me to take on debts that other companies incurred. Thank you. So if I could just speak to that now, if anyone else wants to. Um, the current debt that Woodstock actually has um, the $920,000 is part of your water rate now and your hydrant fee. They they raise that money to help offset the cost of the debt. So Woodstock residents are paying that currently. Um, just like when we bond for a sewer project, we find that money through increasing the sewer rates. Um, additionally, um, the first capital project we've talked about, the Route 4 project, is something the state's going to mandate. The Woodstock Aqueduct Company right now is in front of the Public Utility Commission asking for a tremendous increase in water rates and hydrant fees to help pay for that capital project. Uh, just to give you a sense, this is all on the websites. Uh, right now, the town, so everyone in the town, pays about $30,000 every year in town budget to go to the hydrant fees. If the aqueduct's fee schedule or fee uh, increases are approved, that number has jumped to over $300,000 a year. That's what they're asking for right now in the public utility commission. That's public record if you want to look at it. We're paying for this one way or the other. We're confident as a town we can make it as less painful as possible and help increase the grand list as one of the goals to offset rising taxes. Um, we are well aware, everyone's well aware of what happened. Robert put together the tax bill. We saw the increases ourselves. Uh, we are trying to do this in the most economic way possible. That's one of the reasons why we didn't want to leave any grant money on the table, because we knew every, what everyone's going through. We want people to move here and live here, and they're not going to if they have taxes are too high and they can't get water. And we're trying to solve both those problems. Can I? Yeah. Um, Carrie, uh, thank you for your comments. And I just. I want to say, firstly, your feelings are completely valid. This is a the unfortunate circumstance that we are all being put in. Um, we all suffered greatly through the flooding of the last year. And for many people who were here before, the floods during uh, Hurricane Irene as well. Um, I know that, like, you know, and I will never stop talking about this, but I had a six-week-old baby last year when we had the floods, and I was making bottles with dirty water. So... I can fully appreciate that this feels unfair in a lot of ways. Um, with that being said, I've also had a lot more time to process this. Um, but I think that the way that I'm looking at it and the, the truth that I know now is that the sooner we own the water company, the better it is for everybody here, the better it is for all of our community members, for our businesses, for our schools, um, and for the people who live here and, and rely on it. And we believe that we can give safer and better service to our residents if we own it. So, but I, I totally get it. And it's not unreasonable for you to feel that way. And and thank you all for your work. And it's I um, I completely understand uh, that we need to the water. Right, Ed Esmond, sorry, Woodstock. Um, uh, I completely understand how we need to own the water company because it's obviously it needs help. Uh, but I guess what I'm 
not really sure about from the presentation is exactly how much we're going to be paying for it. There's a, a principle in business called moral hazard, and it means I will do things if I don't think there's any consequence. And it seems to me the current aqueduct has operated with that moral hazard. There's not, they're going to get money for basically, and we're going to be buying basically a, a jalopy, and we're going to spend $10 million on uh, capital improvements plus paying for it, and we're still going to have a jalopy. It'll pass inspection, but it's still going to be a very old, not, I mean, I know Eric ran this thing and has been when I moved here, and it always seemed to chug along, and in the last few years, it, it hasn't chugged along. And it seems, I mean, I think that's like a major, I don't know why we're paying anything for it. I mean, the, the company is basically insolvent, if from what I understand from the financial report. It's like, I, I don't know, I don't know what the legal legality of it, but it really seems like, well, it's a lot of money giving to people that it, for, for something that it has a value because we need it, but we seem to be rewarding that for not, for not putting anything into it. And I, I, I realize we need it. Yeah. I get it. And I, I you guys are, seems to be like a really good solution to a bad problem, but it's still, that is still hanging over it. And I think, I mean, you, from the way you're nodding, I think, I think you can see that, you know, and I don't, I don't have a good solution, either, but I think that has to be, has to be recognized. No, I, you're 100% correct. This is a bad situation we're in and the select board's trying to do the best option they have for their community and this is what they feel is the best option and i just to one of your points um the nine hundred twenty thousand dollars is not going to the aqueduct it's going to pay off their debts so they're not receiving any money from that from that purchase they're just clearing the debt so they can dissolve and basically go away why are we responsible for their debts because i get it for yeah. the machinery and stuff you know they bought a new excavator yeah. Yes, we're buying a new excavator, but but what are there, I'm sure not all of those debts are incurred from stuff that's like that. I mean, all the debts they incurred is to help run the water the water system. So I mean, so they have run the system, and as I said before, that debt will if we don't acquire it, you'll pay off the debt over a long period of time through their usage of the hydro fees and and the water rate. So that's gonna be paid. And, and if I can add, we did have an audit um, done of yeah. the aqueduct because us we're asking the exact sure. same questions right. that you're asking. Um, it's it's just it, it, it's kind of a, a between a rock and a and a hard place. And I think that if the aqueduct had been acting more responsibly, you would have been paying higher water rates all the time. Well, and, and that's and I mean so, that would have been you know in a way we're we're paying back some some bad mistakes that that possibly there was benefit in the lower water rates. I don't know what the individual increase in, in front of the, we talked about the hydrant increase, but there's there's also a um, request by the aqueduct with the public service board to greatly increase. I saw that. The water rates too. I'm aware of that. Completely. And so, you know, as, as hard as it is, the position that we're in is as, as difficult as it is. And, and a lot of us have, have expressed the same sentiments that you are right now. Um, we feel going forward, we can keep your rates, we can give you a better product. And given the fact that the town will be getting, is in a better position. No, I get that. And everything, I completely understand We can that. keep your rates in a better position than they can. But what would be, if, 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 there's not gonna be a private equity company to, to swoop in here. I mean, I, I don't know that. I, is, is there a private equity company that's gonna swoop in here? And and be the white knight for these. I I don't. I mean, I don't know that. But and if there was, if, if, and I don't know that either. I do know that they are in a position that if we don't buy it, your the rates are going to have to be greatly increased, and you're still going to be paying for that jalopy. So. I get okay, it just seems. Part. I'm sorry. I get nothing repaired. Yeah. Well, I mean, they haven't been. You know. That's unfortunately that's the only option we have. And who knows if a private equity company would come in and buy it or not? We don't know that. If they did, they could very easily just, instead of improving everything, shut the hydrant stuff. 
and that seems to be, as Carrie said, it, it, all of this thing seems to have a certain hostage feeling to it. It may, and and but I have. Is not you know sometimes you have no choice. Okay. Well, thank you. And, and again, you guys, I, I was the whole thing seemed like really well thought out, and I do appreciate all of that. But that's a. I don't know. I, I think that I think a lot of people in town and the village are thinking this. Yeah. You know. And that's right. and I think that's why we wanted to give as much time as possible under the circumstances to have these conversations with the community and determine what capital projects and what value the community feels the Vondell has, if if at all. You know, that's feedback we want to have with you. Okay. Um, thank you. So I hope you keep showing up to meetings and okay. we really appreciate your feedback. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 9 a.m. at the South Express floor. John Spector and then Joe. Is there somebody in line? Hold on. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah's online. Go ahead, Sarah. Sarah, you're up. I'm mute. You muted. Sarah. Sarah's iPhone, you're up for a comment. Okay, we'll come back. All right, we'll come back to you. Uh, John. John. Um, John Spector with stuff. Um, two things. One is this is a great presentation and a great, great work. And I really commend the select board. This is a, a complicated issue, and I think you've done a great job. And then what I'm next about to say probably isn't going to be very popular, but um, I, I'm a water company. I live in the village, so I'm a water company customer. I've been underpaying for water since we bought our house 25 years ago. I've been underpaying for supporting the high school, which I know isn't a select board responsibility, but it's a major part of our taxes. I've been underpaying for the sewer. I've been underpaying for the sidewalks. I've been underpaying for everything. We are not being held hostage by some anonymous entity. We're being held hostage by ourselves, by the decisions that we've all made. And I voted for every budget since I was a full-time resident here 10 years ago. We, this is the first this is the first attempt that I've seen to change the way we do business and to pay for what the services that we all want cost and to do so in a, as the most cost effective way as we can. And while my rates will go up, well, we haven't talked about how this is going to be paid for, but, you know, obviously rates will, will go up and, um, and I'm very empathetic for people who, for whom that will, be a big hardship. It won't be a big hardship for me, but philosophically, I just hope everyone recognizes that this is the first step in changing the way Woodstock manages the future and spreads the cost over time rather than feeling like we're being taken hostage. And it isn't going to be the last time that we feel this way. It's going to happen again and again and again over the next five to seven years because for the last 40 years, we've been under investing in Woodstock. And that's just the unfortunate thing. And so we just all have to kind of, I, the main thing I guess is that let's not get too angry at anyone, certainly not the select board members or anyone else or each other, because we all did this to ourselves. And I think it's great that we're taking the first step and I hope we take more to dig ourselves out of the hole that we dug. Thanks. So, um, I, I think. Sarah, did you rejoin Zoom and have a question? Nope. Okay. okay. Any other? Uh, Joe? Uh, I'm Joe DiNatale. Uh, I live in the village. I'm, I'm wondering if um, it might be helpful if it is possible. I mean, everybody seems to be certain that a private equity company could come in and probably purchase the aqueduct company if we don't. But what would that mean? And I'm wondering if it'd be help, helpful to the public to understand what they're paying now and what they might pay. Well, what they're paying now, what they would pay if the town purchases the aqueduct company and what would people be paying if a private equity company, would, what their rate might be. As possible, Eric. Yeah. But if they had those kind of numbers and they showed the people, listen, if you don't buy it, this is what's going to happen. If you do buy it, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Joe. So yeah. if, 
the town owns the water system, uh, similar to the sewer system, it'll be an enterprise fund, which means the expenses have to match the revenue we bring in. Mm -hmm. uh, our, of course, you can have capital reserves as well to add up, but it will be basically a um, balanced budget in the sense of we won't have any extra, we will only raise what we need to raise to off pay the, the expenses for that year. Um, if a private equity firm comes in and purchases a water company, um, legally they're able to get a post-tax return of an investment of uh, 9% um, based off some uh, re uh, analysis that the working water group did. Um, that means they could A, turn off the fire hydrants, um, and B, charge roughly 25% more than a municipality would for water services. Um, so that's the fear of a. What are the numbers be over? You get any idea? So, I mean, just feel if you're paying $10 now, like 27 percent more than that would be what you're yeah. at minimum. You know, that's a simple way. The, the issue of shutting off the, of, of, of the hydrants, doesn't that uh, present a dramatic safety hazard for the whole town? Could they actually do that? I believe they, I think Charlie might be the answer. I believe they could if they, they could shut the fire hydrants off if they wanted, right? Uh, and Charlie Kimball from Woodstock Water Working Group. Uh, legally, a private water company is not required to provide public water for a fire system. However, there is already that public fire system would be a very hard sell to have a private equity company say, you know, we're just going to shut them off. Mm -hmm. So there would be a battle, but legally, they're not obligated to. No, uh, but you keep them on, you take them off. They're not obligated to provide water for fire. So then, so, so yeah. then we would start if that did happen. We're trying to figure out how we get around water anyway. Yes, I, the likely scenario is there would be a legal battle that the state would probably come in and fight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh, anyone online? Um, Tom Harris from the Vermont Standard. I just wanted to get some clarity on on this issue of. Private equity company possibly turn the Public Utilities Commission does not have any or in, no no state entity has any control over the possibility of a private company turning off the fire hydrant. Is that accurate? Uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, we're really in, uh, steeped in this particular area of law, but. The requirements of a privately operated water system do not include operating a fire hydrant system. So there are many nonprofit or co-ops that operate a water system. Uh, many of those have now turned over the supply of the water to a public entity to give it to them as a co-op. There are many mobile home parks that receive water that way mm -hmm. uh, throughout the state. And there are some other co-ops and those other private water companies in the same way. But usually, I, I believe there are condo developments in Woodstock that have to have a backup supply of water in order to, for fire suppression. Mm -hmm. But that is not included in their water system to supply potable water to their houses. Okay. It's a different deal. Thank you. I think, I think we have one more question online. So maybe. Sarah, third time's a charm for you there. Hi, can you hear me this time? Yeah. Yep. Okay, yes, sorry, I couldn't get it off mute last time. Um, first of all, thank you so much for putting everything together. And I do think that this is a super important um, issue for Sarah, the whole sorry. town. Can you state your name? Oh, sorry, yes, Sarah Glasser-Tucker, um, town of Woodstock. Um, Yes, so thank you for all of this. Um, my question, because I know that it is going to come up as we discuss this out and about, um, how have we, or how have you guys figured out um, the division between residents who are on the water system versus those who have a well and private septic and therefore aren't connected to the water system at all? I know this affects all of us, but the, there is a difference. And I was wondering how that's been um, divided up. Okay, I mean, okay. Um, <laughs> or proposed uh, so to I, be. I'll, I'll say two things. Uh, once, and uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record, town residents currently do pay for the water system. Uh, you pay for the hydrant system. Um, it's budgeted each year. 
it comes out of your taxes. So right now, even if you are in South Woodstock, West Woodstock, Cass Hill, you are paying for the water system. Um, second, uh, the first phase one, the select board is having no one pay for that acquisition. So that acquisition is going from reserves we have and grant funding. Uh, when it comes to the third option, which would be uh, to per, uh, bond for the Vondell and the capital projects, uh, the town is going to be looking at all funding funding sources. Um, something that has come up uh, in conversations um, is viewing this as a necessity for the town, not just for the village. Um, so there's been conversation of that original capital projects and the Vondell being shared townwide, uh, not just by uh, water users. Uh, but those are conversations we're also going to have more in depth as we get closer and closer to a capital uh, project improvement number. Uh, then we'll mm -hmm. know what that total cost will be. Uh, but we won't have that number until we have these conversations publicly with everyone to understand what we want to include in that bond. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Michael has a question online. Hi, thank you. Michael Peters, Woodstock. Um, I know, Eric, this was probably explained, but I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Um, is there a potential bad decision if the first vote gets passed and the second vote doesn't? Could you just explain that scenario a little more? Um, you know, obviously we're all, well, not all of us, but, you know, those in favor are hoping that both pass, but what if one passes and the other does not? Are we then you know, going to the PUC to raise rates ourselves just to pay for these things? Or, you know, are we in the same boat as the aqueduct or is there another route? So that's a great question. So one, for clarification, uh, once the town owns a water system, we do not have to go to the PUC for water rates. The water rates will be set by the select board uh, in public meetings like they do with the sewer rates as well. Um, so that'll be done by a vote of the five select board members um, before any water bill is sent out for the year uh, based on the water budget that got voted on a town meeting the previous March. Um, so the PUC, PUC will not have that involvement any, any further. Um, so if the first vote is successful and the second vote is unsuccessful, um, there'll really be two options, uh, or three options, I guess. Option one would be to do nothing, uh, and eventually the state will probably come in and fine us, like they're threatening to fine the water, the aqueduct company, uh, if they don't do any improvements, hence they're asked to increase their rates. Um, Second would be for the board to get together, hold more public meetings, and then hold another uh, special meeting for capital projects to hopefully get them approved, maybe paring them down or looking for more grant funding. Um, the third option would be to then um, increase uh, water rates and hiring fees um, to cover those capital costs that we need and raise the money that way rather than um, through, through bonding. But like I said before, some of these projects have to be done, whether it's us or the aqueduct. We can do it cheaper. We think we can do it smarter. We can do it more efficiently. Uh, and that's why we feel this is the way to go. And if I could just yep. add that, Michael, that our ideal is that we engage with the community enough over the next two months, our bond vote is reflective of what the community wants us to bond for and that it is successful. That's our ideal scenario yes and that's why Thank we yeah postpone the second vote so we have those conversations so people would feel comfortable with, with, with what they vote on yep. jeffrey yes um okay you don't see me because the host has taken my picture away for some Sorry. reason that was my bad that's <laughs> okay that's okay uh, well you can we all know okay. what you look like jeff <laughs> all right that's okay anyway um, so I'm 100% behind this entire proposal. I think it's so important for the entire town of Woodstock. But my question is, I haven't heard anything about staffing for the maintenance of uh, this project. And uh, who, who currently our highway department is understaffed. What's the plan for taking care of the system right off the bat? And uh, I mean, there are breaks in the water and so forth. Uh, and how are we going to pay for that? Yep. So, um, one, just to be clear with everyone, you know, if um, there's a successful vote October 29th, does not mean we wake, wake up October 30th and own the company. There'll be a closing cost, more due diligence. So, there will be a lapse between a successful vote and then actual closing 
uh, and the transfer of the system over to the town. So there will be a gap, you know, in there. Um, second, um, legally, we need to have someone on staff um, who has a water license. It takes one year to get that license. Um, there are Algodac employees we've talked to, um, and we're confident that if and when we were to acquire the company, they would come over with their license to be with us to kind of provide that, a, that license, but also the knowledge of the water system. Um, third, we've talked to other municipalities um, who have bought private water companies. Uh, and what they've done is usually um, have it follow with uh, underneath their sewer department once the sewer department is up and licensed. Um, Arlington, I believe, is the last one. They have three people in the sewer department. We have three people in our sewer department. Um, so right there, we feel like we'd have the staff in to help. Um, our new DPW director, Chris Barr, and myself and the aqueduct are already in conversations of how that would work. Um, the last part of this is the current structure of the water company. Your, your fees and higher fees go towards their salaries. So if we took over the aqueduct and changed nothing, the current fees and place and revenue they get pays for their employees. So there would be no real extra cost on that in there. Um, but we will go through the process and have the right staff, keep the right staff that will help us know the system and fix the system. Thank you. Hi, name is Charlie Kimball, uh, River Street resident and member of the Woodstock Water Working Group. Uh, thank you very much for bringing this all the way across, well, hopefully across the finish line. Um, since the water company was formed back in 1886, this conversation hasn't gotten this far. Some people didn't want to have it. They said, no, we don't want to wa own the water company, so it's great to be here. I want to emphasize that I have a lot of respect for the Woodstock Aqueduct Company and their commitment from 1886 through now. They were not run as a money-grabbing company. They are really run as a nonprofit, trying to keep rates as low as possible for the residents and the users of the water. Now, could they have charged higher rates? Absolutely. Um, and they may have not been aware of that necessarily when they were setting rates and coming back all the time. But So it's not that there is any malfeasance or anything that was brought before by the Woodstock Aqueduct Company. This is just a transaction. They're at the end of their management line and trying to run this company, and it's time for new leadership and new direction, and that should be the town, and that's great. The second thing, just in terms of sources of money, um, is that there are grants available. We're able to obtain a couple of grants from the state to help facilitate this purchase. There's other funding sources, like the Northern Borders Regional Commission, which funds other projects like this. They funded a project like this up in Montgomery, Vermont. So that could be an incredible source of funds for the town and its capital projects. So this does make a lot of sense for the town to take ownership of it. I support this vote and I'm looking forward to October 29th. Thank you. Wendy online has her hand up. Wendy. Thank you, uh, Wendy Marinin, Woodstock Village. Uh, I also want to applaud all the hard work that went into this presentation. Eric, you did a fantastic job. Um, the enthusiasm and the confidence in your proposal and the, the select board's proposal is palpable and much appreciated. Um, and I don't want to muddy the waters too much, but um, I just wanted to know how much discussion or, or how much of a relationship owning the the water will have with owning and and the and how the sewer system is owned. Um, you mentioned the staffing working together and one working under the other. Um, other, I know bigger municipalities, it's one in the same department. So I just wanted to hear. Um, be I am in full support of acquiring the the the. The water company, I think it's the responsible thing. It puts a lot of control back into the community. Um, but I just did want to know how much discussion and consideration and benefit there is vis-a-vis -vis the sewer aspect um, in our uh, facility in our in our town. Um, without you can't have a sewer system without water. I know that much, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, I just love to hear if there's depth and benefit from in that direction. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, thanks, Wendy. And this is a great way to plug uh, our website. Again, on the website, we have some of these things listed under the fact sheet efficiencies if we were to fire the aqueduct. Uh, okay. One of the things is, um, this has happened in the past, the aqueduct will go in, uh, dig up a road, repair a pipe, pave it over, and then two years later, we come in, dig up the same road, repair a sewer pipe, pave it over. Um, so those things will automatically, we have to work together, work as one. So we open up a road, we'll hopefully open up, change both pipes at the same time. Uh, we're going to have the same people aware where the sewer pipes are and the water pipes. Um, so we'll have a staff fully knowledgeable about what's happening underneath Woodstock at all times. Um, second, when you think about admin staff, um, we already have someone internally who does yeah. accounts receivable, who does billing. Uh, we're confident they can you know, do more accounts receivable, more billing um, for the water system, as well as the sewer and tax bills. Um, We'll share responsibilities from my office all the way down. Um, so a lot of admin work that's getting done on the water company will transfer over to us and we'll run it just like um, we run the sewer department. Um, and finally, something we've talked about um, internally a little bit and now externally is the board has always wanted to look at how we do sewer rates. Um, acquiring the water company is a great time to look at how we should do water rates. Um, so why not sit down at the same time and figure out how to do sewer and water rates at the same time, get some of those great, curious, intellectual people of Woodstock together in a group and have them work through this for a long time and come propose a better way to charge users for, for these services. Uh, so I think all those things, Wendy, is a great way for us to kind of be more efficient and effective and hopefully ideally save more money. So clearly what, uh, my intention was. I'll just ask if you're not speaking on Zoom, if you could mute yourself. We're getting a little bit of feedback. Thank you. And then as you continue breathing, just nope. Tom, what up? Uh, yeah, Tom Devil Voice. I live down in South Woodstock and um, uh, Many of you have already heard this, full disclosure, when my father died, I inherited two shares of stock in the Aqueduct Company, <laughs> and I've served on the board uh, for quite a few years. My dad's gone, uh, yeah, coming on 30 years. Um, just one detail um, that I think is important in this conversation, the debt that um, is involved in this, that the town would be Taking, taking over or, and or paying off, depending on how you look at it, for the aqueduct, is all debt that's remaining on infrastructure improvements the aqueduct company has done recently. The, uh, Eric, you would know this better than I do, but the, I suspect the largest of those um, is from a project putting in a new Maine on the south side of the river, which was completed in 2016, 17, somewhere in there. Um, that was close to a half million dollar burn. And I don't know where the debt on that stands now. It was, and there's one older than that, um, which I don't know the exact balance left. <clears throat> it's probably close one side or the other of 100,000. And then, uh, you know, it's all, those are, there's that one older one, then the big project um, for a new eight inch main coming to the village, which is less than 10 years old. And then more recent improvements and maybe some debt left on the new uh, excavator, which was a, well, I think the company got it for 80 odd thousand, but it's uh, got very few hours on it. It's probably worth that still. Um, but anyway, that entire debt load um, has to do with things that were spent on improving the system. And it's not like the um, board of directors was having their meeting in Bermuda or uh, anything like that. In fact, I. Uh, yeah, I think if I have, um, I don't keep my tax returns any longer than I have to, but uh, I doubt I've 
and paid more than $200 in director's fees. Probably work out to about 10 bucks a year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in term of, terms of dividends, it's even less than that. Um, the only time we have gotten dividends, I think, is when there was a timber sale in the Vondell. So, well, Charlie mentioned this. It's basically been run as a nonprofit. And, and, and I think John had a good point. Uh, you know, maybe the company should have been going for higher rates and, and doing more, but it hasn't. But anyway, that's just a detail. When people say, well, why are we taking on this debt? That entire debt is um, for infrastructure that is really very recent. Uh, anyway, just a detail. Thank you. Uh, Brenda Blakeman, Village of Woodstock. Um, after I just listened to Tom, it made me realize um, that we're not just buying a water system. We're also buying some equipment. Is that right? Um, would you be willing to share with us what we're purchasing? Um, I can give you a rough overview. Uh, besides property, there's a excavator, a trailer for it, uh, skid scare, um, a F-350 uh, wire tank, uh, a pump, solar tractors, um, John Deere lawn tractor, um, the West End roof material, um, the billing system. Yeah, it's about 1.4 million, I said earlier, probably all in. So uh, we're not just buying a water system, buying we're also buying system. equipment that goes along with the water system to help to maintain it. And one of the important things are the, are the solar panels out on Route 12. Um, at Thompson's Corners, which will also help to keep the utilities open. They presently do, and they will continue to assist the town with the utilities and running the aqueduct. Yeah, see, these are all assets that I think are really good to know. Thank you. Eric, you said water tank. Is that a small tank? What is it? Um, it's valued at $339,000. Yeah. Any, any other questions, comments? <laughs> I guess not. Okay. Does the board want to set a meeting for Wednesday nights? Yes. Yes. I believe we. <laughs> five thirty or thirty? I thought it was five thirty. Yeah. Award the vote. Yes. Right. Yep. So right before the board makes that. So just a reminder, uh, tomorrow morning, Vice Chair and myself will be at the South Woodstock Country Store at 9 a.m. If any of you have more questions, more comments, we're happy to take them then. If someone you know can attend tonight, either virtually or online, and they want to talk to someone, we'll be there. Um, probably by Wednesday night, we'll announce a schedule for the next week of where select board members and staff will be to answer questions of, you, of yourself. Um, and then the select board will vote to warrant a meeting for October 29th. One thing we failed to do is introduce ourselves. So my apologies. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll start. I'm Susan Ford. I live in South Woodstock. Carrie Cole, this was set on very short notice, and Carrie Cole in the village was not able to attend tonight. Um, I'm Laura Powell. I'm here on the select board. I also live in the village. I live right by West. So you'll probably see me at the playground or at the school or uh, at the football game but I'm very reachable, so please reach out. I'm Ray Bourgeois, and I live in a town. Greg Fullerton, I live in South Woodstock. Anything else? Hmm? Were you gonna say something else? No. Oh, okay. okay. If there's nothing else, I'd like a motion to adjourn. So moved. For a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody. If you haven't signed in, uh, there's a clipboard over there if you would, please.